News for Women. Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is October 22nd, 2023. Here is the Feisty News for Women. During the two weeks since Hamas, the Palestine militant group launched a surprise attack on Israel, killing more than a thousand people, wounding others, and kidnapping innocent women and children, the world has watched in horror. Israel then initiated a counterattack, dropping bombs on Gaza and reportedly killing thousands of Palestinians with plans to continue with a ground attack. Just watching the Israel-Gaza war is traumatizing, yet the world's attention to this feud is long overdue. Although there are neighboring countries, Israel and Palestine have been at war for more than 100 years, yet this war seems different. It feels like something big is about to happen. Women around the world feel devastated and angry about the significant loss of lives from both countries, and our anger is valid. The Feisty News for Women wants to allow women to speak their piece. Today, we have a special guest, Irina Sukerman, human rights lawyer and president of Scarab Rising Incorporated, a security and geopolitical risk strategic advisory. Irina was born in Ukraine and has a special interest in this war. Welcome to the Feisty, Irina. Please tell us how you feel about what is happening in Gaza and Israel right now. Thank you so much for the invitation to the Feisty News, T. Erica. This is uh, an honor and an important opportunity. Um, as a woman and as a human rights activist and lawyer, I'm absolutely appalled by what I have seen for the past week and a half. And as a woman, I'd like to emphasize how how this aspect of the conflict has not been highlighted enough. The women who have been victimized by Hamas, an international terrorist organization designated by the United States, by the European Union, United Kingdom, and other countries, has engaged in horrific war crimes, including and in particular against women who have been humiliated, who have been raped and paraded in, in public in front of the cameras. Women and children have been abducted, taken hostage, burned alive, in some cases decapitated. This has been devastating to watch and I've personally been unable to sleep, unable to stop thinking about this. The images of horror, of burned bodies, of violated women and wearing bloody pants, stabbed in the crotch, raped, violated, thrown in front of the terrorists as human shields, this is not something I can get off my mind or forget about. I was not there in person, but I feel like I am. Just from from the number of people I've personally spoke to, spoken to who are e either in hiding from rocket fire uh, that, that is threatening them and their children, from hearing children crying uh, in the background of phone calls with my family members, from talking to people who've lost family members as a result of the of the war, I have family and I have friends in Israel, and this has been extremely uh, personal for me. Yeah. I'm not going to hide it. And, and Hamas needs to be taken take into account. Its leadership needs to be expelled from the countries that are harboring it. Countries like Europe, yeah. Qatar, Turkey, they need to be put on trial. The, the terrorists who are actually perpetrating the violence need to be liquidated and the international community needs to come together to put a stop to the funding of this political ideology and political um, framework for this organization. It needs to work to get rid of Hamas presence in Gaza to restructure the governance there and to give the people both in Israel and in Gaza an opportunity for peace, an opportunity for security, for freedom and from some sort of a uh, peaceful coexistence in the future. While Hamas is in power, that's not going to happen. Thank you, Irina. I appreciate your candor. And we all agree that the violations of women by Hamas during this war are atrocious. Thank you for bringing that excellent point to the forefront. Irina is right. Women have been especially humiliated and degraded as a result of this war. With so many lives being lost, why are the images of mutilated innocent women being shared the most across social media. Women are featured as victims of this war, but we can't speak about it. 
Because of the threat of losing their jobs and having their families attacked, many women feel as though they cannot speak out against the war. The two Muslim U.S. Congresswomen have received multiple death threats since the Israel-Gaza war has begun, which are aimed to silence them. But the threats haven't silenced them. Listen to U.S. Congresswoman Omar share her reaction to the Israel-Palestine war during a press conference on Capitol Hill in Washington on Friday. Israel has dropped more bombs in the last 10 days than we dropped in a whole year in Afghanistan. Where is your humanity? Where is your outreach? Where is your care for people? Irina Sukerman and U.S. Representative Omar aren't the only women who are feisty enough to speak their minds concerning the Israel-Palestine war. Amira Haas is an Israeli journalist and author and the daughter of two Holocaust survivors. She writes a well-known news column covering Palestinian affairs in the West Bank and Gaza, where she has lived for nearly 30 years. Amira Haas's opinion comes from a woman who is right in the thick of it all. In this clip, Amira speaks to Democracy Now! about her experience in Gaza. But I cried when some people spoke about their grandparents, Holocaust survivors, and I felt I was there also to, to represent my dead parents who are Holocaust survivors. In this, uh, you know, call to the, to the world to, st you know, how, how can they, how can they stand on the side and do nothing to stop this terrible slaughter? I cannot, I cannot bear myself talking here safely in New York while I know what two million people, more than two million people are going through. Uh, and nothing can justify what is being, what, what Israel, what we, what my tax money is uh, uh, causing right now. I don't know if my tax money is now the, 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 behind the missile that might kill one of my, one of my uh, 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 good friends, loved friends in, in Gaza. Heard and received, Amira. Thank you for being so bold. Are you ready for another feisty woman's opinion? Does being pro-Palestine automatically equate to being pro-Hamas? My feisty opinion when we come back from our break. Don't miss it. Be sure to subscribe to thefeistynews.com. Women's news, views, and issues every single day. Be feisty and informed. Join us. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News for Women. Girl, guess what? When the Hamas militant group launched a vicious attack on innocent citizens of the state of Israel on October 7th, the world cringed in horror. The counterattack was even more devastating with Israel dropping bombs on the Palestinian population of Gaza in retaliation. While everyone has the right to choose a side and try to place the blame so that they can have someone to direct their anger towards, it seems as though the right to speak up isn't really for everyone. People who protest in support of Palestine are losing their jobs and being threatened simply for mentioning that they are pro-Palestine. But why? It may be that when the term pro-Palestine is used, people generally believe it is an indication that the person is pro-Hamas, pro-terrorist, pro-senseless destruction of the Jewish community. It does not. My friends and loved ones, pro-Palestine does not equal pro-Hamas or pro-terrorist. Pro-Palestine means we want the people of Palestine to be free from being forcefully occupied. That's all pro-Palestine means. No one wants to see the two neighbors at war. We all want Palestinians and the Israeli people to experience peace of mind and self-sovereignty. For the sake of humanity, please cease fire. Welcome to the Feisty News for Women.